Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this video for the IRMS, um, one of a number of videos we're doing for our virtual conference this May, as we've obviously had to reschedule the main conference um, until November. I'm Reynold Lemming, or Ren, and I'm the incoming chair of the IRMS. I'm also the person who's taken responsibility um, for liaising with all the parties involved in this great collaborative project around developing a digital DPIA solution. Um, over the next minutes during the course of this video, we're going to be holding a panel session to explore a little bit more about what the DPIA solution uh, can do, and I'll be introducing my colleagues in just a few minutes. Now, I'm personally very excited about this because I do believe that the DPIA process is an absolutely essential one to ensure that whenever we introduce or change a business process and or system that involves personal data that we're doing exactly the right things and indeed making those key decisions about whether the process should occur in, in the fashion it's being designed before it's launched and indeed the same with systems and technology. Um, I'm involved helping in the specification of this system and I'm already very excited from the early conversations that I've had about just how clever and great this tool hopefully will be. From the IRMS perspective, um, although the commercials of this uh, haven't really been confirmed, um, there are a number of organisations who are what you might call early adopters and therefore early investors in this programme. But from a commercial basis, we will at some stage be agreeing terms so that there's a membership discount to our members who wish once the solution is fully uh, deployed and or at least developed, who wish to become customers of it. So just quickly now, I'll hand over um, to my colleagues within this video who are on the phone. So we have Jane Hanser from CC2i. We have Stephen Gerling, Greater Manchester Combined Authority. And from Looking Local, who are the, um, the software development partners within this, we have Omar Rashid and Leanne Viney. So thank you very much. And uh, Jane, if I can pass over to you. Sure, thanks ever so much, Ren. I'm Jane Hanser from CC2i, and we're a public sector co-funding platform and the organization that brought this cross public sector collaboration around the digital DPIA together. Um, and we have uh, a number of uh, experts who are sort of uh, driving this project. So we're gonna do this in a bit more of a interview style um, rather than sort of PowerPoint dominated uh, session, because uh, then we can have a bit more conversational uh, interaction, hopefully if the technology allows. Um, so I'm gonna ask, be asking the questions and Stephen, you're up first. Stephen is the Information Governance Project Manager from Greater Manchester Combined Authority. And this project originated from the GMCA. So can you give us a little bit of background and context about it all, Stephen? Uh, yes, yeah, sure, thanks, Jane. Um, so in January 2019, uh, we embarked on an alpha phase project, uh, which was funded by the MHCLG and the Local Digital Fund. And it brought together partners from across Greater Manchester um, and we were tasked with developing a prototype um, that began to demonstrate the benefits of a digital DPIA um, that we believe that this tool can deliver. Um, so we worked on that up until June 2019 when the project concluded. And then we had a prototype at the end. So it was good because it gave us a foundation really that we can build upon of something that we know was right and would actually deliver the benefits that we believed it would. Um, to improve information governance processes and to really embed a privacy by design approach across an organisation. And so based on some of the estimates that we made um, against our own processes during that project, we projected that an effective and fully embedded digital DPIA process and tool could deliver approximately 65% savings on our existing process. Um, and yeah. so that's something that we're really looking forward to testing out further in the, in, in the next phase as we move forward with our partners. Yeah. Well, that's a big number and privacy mm. by design is important to everyone. So, yeah, there's a good bedrock to build on. Um, and I know we started working together just before Christmas, actually, around the co-funding and bringing the organisations together. Um, and along with the IRMS, we've got a, a, a fantastic group um, who are going to steer the project. Can you tell us a little bit more about those regional, local, cross-sector, national organisations that uh, are helping here? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, and as you say, it's a fantastic group that has uh, come together on this collaboration um, and really builds out from what was a sort of Greater Manchester centric Alpha project and our national footing, really, that we're on. And we're working across 
um, organisations across the public sector on that national basis, which is fantastic for where we are now. And um, so we do have ourselves from the GMCA, from the Greater Manchester Combined Authority, representing the Greater Manchester in that original project team. Um, but we also now have Norfolk County Council that have come on board with us. We have University of Nottingham, uh, the London Office of Technology and Innovation, uh, the training provider Act Now, the Information Sharing Gateway, and we have the key national players, uh, the IRMS, who we're talking to today. We have NHSX, and we have the Information Commissioner's Office as well, and um, partnered with us on this uh, collaboration. Uh, it gives us a fantastic array of knowledge um, from uh, from passionate. Uh, project collaborators who really believe in the uh, benefits that a solution like this can achieve um, and we have that cross sector representation now um, and with the ICO's involvement uh, we'll be able to get that um, invaluable input from the from the national regulator into the solution that we're providing and um, so this group will ensure that the uh, the solution does deliver those multiple benefits and is influenced by approaches that all told combines with over 100 years of, of IG experience coming to the table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Leanne, that you're head of design for Looking Local, who are, as Ren said, the software developers for this um, platform. So we had that discovery workshop where everyone here and, and many others were um, uh, had that workshop to try and uncover what a digital DPIA platform could and should do. That workshop was in lockdown. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened and, and how it went? Yeah, uh, indeed, these are these are very different times. So uh, typically we would run our kickoff workshops in a face to face environment room full of people and, and a mountain full of um, post it notes. This is our first time running a kickoff workshop virtually, but there were definitely some clear benefits that you know, we saw. So in, instead of those post it notes, we operated a, a combination of a collaborative document writing, uh, and around the virtual table discussion and a combination of those gave people the freedom and confidence to contribute their bit. Sometimes in a room full of people, there are characters that kind of dominate the conversation because they're more comfortable with, with speaking with rooms full of people uh, and, and others don't particularly get heard. So this way, everyone was able to contribute their thoughts. Uh, in a way that they felt comfortable with doing so and it was really really interactive and everyone stayed for the duration including some family pets so it was it was different uh, the uh, my overarching measure of success for these things typically is um, if I've spoken more than any one person then um, it probably hasn't gone as well as I wanted it to uh, but uh, I barely got an, uh, barely got a word in edgeways here so in my book it, you know, it went really well indeed uh, in that meeting, we discuss kind of their local processes and their setups, you know, what's working well in their organisations and what their pain points are, and if they could think of any solutions that were immediately obvious to, to tackle some of those challenges. Uh, we talked about what the features and behaviours of the digital product that they wanted to see, uh, as well as defining then the, the series of work packages that this project would deliver on and prioritising those and finally kind of wrapped up with discussing how we would operate this project in a, in a virtual world and how we would all kind of meet on a regular basis and, and the, the kind of documents that we'd be working on collaboratively. So yeah, great success. I'm really looking forward to continuing to operate in that way. And as you said, you talked about the pain points and the challenges that each of the partners had. So can you go into a little bit more deeper around those challenges and was there consensus around those challenges? Very much consensus uh, and indeed we're following up that um, kickoff workshop with individual one to ones and so far, we're nearly at the end of that process but so far everyone we've spoken to very much echoed how, how well they thought that kickoff workshop went and, and indeed how how much consensus there was so uh, I'll touch on a, on a few so we had brought up over and over again the distinct lack of IG by design within their organisations that DPAs are being conducted towards the end of projects as opposed to at the start. And if they're conducted at the start, then the benefits of doing that are realised throughout the project. Lack of awareness or indeed fear over the process. People felt that um, maybe identifying risks might be meaning that the project stops, but actually it's it's usually the complete opposite to that. Uh, and people had a, didn't really understand the process, indeed, how you know, how do you identify risk? So helping people kind of through that process. But digital DPA was needed to make the subject more accessible. So hand-holding users through uh, identifying whether a DPI is needed in the first place and indeed what type of DPI is needed. So is it the full one? Is it a light one? Is it a CCTV specific one? Or, or indeed the, the kind of the COVID-19 template that's also been created. 
the ability to share and reuse uh, previous DPAs from across multiple organisations would was also something that um, people wanted. So, for example, people buying video conferencing, they won't be the first organisation to have done that, especially not in times like this. So is there is there room to consider reusing elements of a DPA completed by another organisation? They felt that that would definitely drive efficiencies into this process. Uh, and similarly, providing a library of DPAs would help people to understand what on earth the type of content is that they're looking for to be put into the various sections of, of this of this process. So uh, that way we were the general the general direction of travel would be to push the responsibility back into the, the wider organisation, giving them the tools and the confidence to kind of complete their own DPAs and, and sharing and escalating those kind of as, as needed. I think that was generally the, the consensus that everyone reached. Yeah. And Omar, you're obviously a business analyst working alongside Leanne um, at Looking Local, and I know you're doing the one-to-one -one sessions and bringing the discovery report together. Um, can you give us a little more insight, you know, Leanne sort of outlined the challenges, uh, can you give us a bit more insight around the benefits that the group identified that a digital platform would offer them? Yeah, so we've uh, collaborated with a large number of public sector organisations, ranging from local authorities, healthcare, GP practices and universities, amongst others who are keen to progress to a digital DPIA, not only because of the efficiencies involved in terms of business as usual, but more importantly to underpin the work the sector is doing um, to respond to COVID-19 more effectively. Now the collaboration has helped us to identify solutions not only for individual organisations but also for the wider sector. So some of the benefits the digital DPIA offers is, as Stephen mentioned earlier, the uh, DPIA could deliver savings of approximately 65%. Um, it also um, gives an opportunity for the upskilling of staff across the business to progress and manage DPIAs, which uh, frees up more time for IG and DPAO to work more strategically. This, D, uh, this digital DPIA contains automated workflows enabling users to remotely involve managers or appropriate IG staff for further input or sign off, which is uh, particularly useful right now considering the COVID-19 circumstances. Although not extensively, this outlines the collaborative nature of the platform. Um, the solution also ensures the DPIA is undertaken at the right time which is the start of the project and not retrospectively which is what we've um, which is a feedback we've been getting from organizations is the DPIA is uh, being missed at the start and then um, they're having to delay the project in order to complete the DPIA mid-project or towards the end of it. Uh, this uh, digital solution also gives organizations the capability to audit all DPIAs providing accountability and traceability. Um, this high level of transparency also will help build trust with regulatory bodies outside of the organization. And uh, the idea of having a DPIA light has also been discussed as well as shared DPIAs from other public sector bodies will mean that complex DPIAs, um, for example, the implementation of Office 365 could be reused to save time and money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's a lot of sort of challenges and, and benefits that sort of you know mirror each other, aren't there? Um, Absolutely. And so Leanne, going back to um, so taking all of the challenges and all of the benefits that are outlined in that workshop, how is how is your development going to address those and um, you know how quickly do you see that happening? Yeah, so we're starting the development phase in the next two weeks. We've identified that it's a cloud-based platform with permission-based access that's required. Um, a system that allows a, a collaborative approach to completing DPIAs uh, and allows project teams and departments to trigger the process whilst inviting input from others within their organisations. So um, internal IG experts or from outside their organisation, so suppliers of the products or the services that they're looking to to implement and indeed once that DPA is complete the ability to assign it to the the data guardian or the DPO or the, the CSIRO for, 
people kind of sign off, maybe escalating based on, on risk to their legal teams or, or, or the ICO. Uh, we need the ability to identify if a DPIA is required in the first place, uh, and indeed what type of DPIA, uh, what template would best suit their needs. Uh, the analysis space has also shown us that there's a need for sharing or publishing full or indeed summary DPIAs for others to see and, and reuse. Uh, and an in a work package that I'm particularly looking forward to working on is the introduction of some sort of automated risk scoring as well. That's uh, something that everyone around the table is really keen to, to start to work up and bring together. And we've got some people that are dedicated to, to look at that work package uh, in, in the next few weeks. We suspect that we'll be delivering the first iteration of this product within the next four weeks. So uh, a really quick um, sort of turnaround and, and getting it in front of people to, to feel and test. And so how many work packages in total are there um, that were identified in the, in the workshop? Yeah, I think there's about 13 work packages, um, maybe even a couple more since then, since the one-to-ones um, have operated. But uh, the, the entire point of run, running this project in an agile fashion it is one where on a, on a two weekly basis we convene virtually and discuss the priority of those work packages to ensure that the right one is being addressed at the right time. So those work packages may may well change over over the case over the course of the the project. That's the, yep. that's the point of this process. And so I guess that's a sort of interesting point, isn't it? That a lot of projects don't work in this collaborative co-design way. So if I can go back to you, Omar, can you tell us a little bit more about how the, the partners, I mean, you know, Ren's here, Stephen as well, they're going to be helping steer the development. How are you going to manage that and, and how do you sort of get their information and, and put that into the development um, timeline? Yeah, so uh, Leanne was talking earlier about the kickoff workshop, which brought everyone to the table to collaboratively inform the directional travel. So from there, we moved into the one to one sessions where we worked with each organization to deep dive into their individual setups and needs. Um, I mean, in, in we would usually hold one to one meetings on the client site, but due to the circumstance of our COVID-19, we haven't been able to do that. So we've been holding these uh, virtually through a number of conference platforms. Um, we're near the end of uh, that phase now, and uh, we be moving on to the next phase. Um, so the next phase is we'll publish the draft analysis report in in the next week or so, and via everyone's feedback as we shape it towards the final document. Following that, we'll enter the development phase. And um, we'll be using G Suite to hold and share key documents. G Suite is a collaborative tool which gives all the organizations the ability to access and make changes to the documents throughout the project. And um, so, as uh, Leanne mentioned, during the development phase, there will be two weekly reviews with all organizations to ensure the project is on track and to prioritize uh, the work packages for the coming two weeks. And um, we do uh, anticipate having this first prototype of the product put in front of the group within the next four weeks. OK, and I remember from the workshop, there was a real thing about language and simplifying language and that um, it will there be sort of, you know, there'll be review and sign off by each of the partners and, and input into that language. Is that right? Yeah, that's um, the, one of the key pieces to success here is taking this um, expert knowledge that we have around the table uh, and, in, and indeed those that are very used to completing DPIAs uh, and translating that into language that um, is plain English uh, and that kind of everyone understands and, and then breaks down those barriers to entry and helps many, many people complete the DPIAs that they need. And equally, the I guess the, the key is to try and find the right workflow and the right sort of stages for the DPIA to go through that re represents what actually happens in real life in each of these organisations. Yeah, indeed. And that's, that's the input and that's the value that having this broad spread of public sector uh, and, and national partners brings to the table. It allows us to get views, uh, multiple views from all different organisations. OK, so my final question, and it's to each of you, is if you could sum up what this digital DPIA platform will do or is, is going to be in a nutshell, um, what would that be? Because this is like it's like the virtual elevator here, OK? So we're going one floor, it's a nutshell. Stephen, I'm coming to you first. OK, 
here we go. So <laughs> the digital DPI solution will be a foundational pillar in an organization's privacy by design approach. It is going to greatly improve existing processes and it's going to deliver cross-cutting benefits to multiple service areas. This includes program and projects where we know a lot of this starts, that extends out to other service areas, information governance teams, absolutely, records management, risk and audit. And by being a solution which delivers these benefits, when fully embedded, it has the absolute ability to influence an organization's strategic approach. Ding! Perfect. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I think you pre-prepared that, Stephen. <laughs> that was off the top of my head, Jane. How dare you? <laughs> Omar, yourself? Uh, so in a nutshell, the digital DPIA is the collaborative and user-friendly platform which will be used to help organisations identify any data protection risks for upcoming projects. The collaborative element will allow multiple users across the business to manage and mitigate risks as a team. This also means that organisations come across multiple sectors, can work together to exercise good practice in line with GDPR regulations. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> and Leanne, yourself? Yeah, indeed. So in addition to everything everyone's um, said previously, I'm really looking forward to having a product that will meet the needs of many public sector organisations, not just those around the table. And um, part of this process has been to identify what the business case for implementing a solution like this would be so that other organisations can benefit from the work that we're doing here. Uh, the result will be a product that has been informed by multiple public sector organisations and can be reused by many, many more. Perfect. And Ren, have you got a, a nutshell for digital DPIA? Well, how many floors have I got left to travel? <laughs> um, well, first of all, everything they said. And uh, four key things, just very quickly. Um, firstly, it there'll be flexibility in it to cater with the various different scenarios that there are within DPIA processes. Secondly, that will be integrated into an organization's uh, risk management processes as it should. Thirdly, um, that the automation and completion of the DPIAs will involve a delegated model so different people can contribute to different parts based upon their roles and responsibilities and in involvement within not only information governance, but the particular business process. And last but not least, uh, reusability so that in essence a library of what has been developed before is available to reuse to save time to save efforts and reuse good practice and thinking brilliant <laughs> we've gone up the building down the building and we all know <laughs> so i guess that's all that we we um are, are going to pr propose and present to you today and um i know that stephen has presented to the irms north group before but uh, hopefully when uh, we can all meet again together and maybe at your conference later in the year in November we can update um, what's actually happened what's been we'll be able to show um, what's been developed uh, to your all of your members um, but hopefully that's a good insight to where we are now and what we're what what we're doing thank you I was just going to quickly say as well that uh, we will be keeping members posted through our usual comms channel um, stage by stage as this goes so there'll be plenty of information provided before conference Brilliant. And hopefully there'll be a screen right at the end of this recording that will give you a couple of URLs and um, email addresses that um, you can contact us on if you've got any questions um, and maybe a view of those work packages as well, just uh, to keep it, give everyone a bit more detail. Brilliant. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.